Hello everybody and welcome back to Quinn's Coins, your home for treasure hunting of all kinds. Now today we have a little bit of a different video for you. Uh, actually something that I don't think has ever been done in the Cornwall hunting community on YouTube as far as I can see. Uh, we're going to be doing an interview with my friend Dustin here who is a bank teller and uh, he's going to be giving us a little bit of information on uh, just the stuff that he goes through in his daily life, uh, his adventures with Cornwall hunting and uh, yeah it's going to be a good time and we're going to have a lot of questions for him and just you know chit chat back and forth and uh, Kevin's going to be here as well yep. just to join in on the conversation and uh, we're gonna be showing you some cool coins and uh, just talking coins so let's get right into it so Dustin you're a bank teller yes and how is that uh, bank telling is fun so you meet a bunch of customers but if you like coins uh, it's like a whole different ball game. The Loomis truck comes and it's almost like <laughs> Christmas, you know? Because I know that somewhere in there, there might be something real sweet. Right. So it's actually real cool. If you're, like, if you're into coins uh, and you're trying to go like in a business route, I would encourage anybody to get into banking. I've really enjoyed it. Absolutely, and I've worked as a cashier. Um, that was, you know, fun. And Kevin's working as a yeah. cashier yeah. now. Um, it was fun to, you know, be able to open rolls and people are always getting mad at me for um, opening rolls a little bit too early and making yeah. a change mm -hmm. at the end. But, uh -huh. uh, I was always, you know, trying to get in there and see if I could get some coins. Um, but that's just a whole nother level being a bank teller. Sure. So yeah, on that note, Kevin, uh, you're a cashier now at a pharmacist. Yeah, guys. So I, I just picked up uh, my summertime job uh, at a local pharmacy here uh, in Northern Michigan. So uh, I'm working as cash re register mostly. Um, I'm dealing with a lot of coins, but not nearly as many as uh, <laughs> Dustin here. So it's certainly an interesting perspective as to what he has to say. So. Right, and uh, also being a bank teller, you're also a coin roll hunter, and you've been a coin roll hunter for how long? Um, it, it started when I was like, probably like nine or 10. My dad went and got me like one of those blue books, you know, it folds mm. open and it was like pennies from like 45 to like 75. And I started like putting them in the spots and soon that became filled and I was like, man, this is really fun. I enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, kind of took a lapse for a while. Got right. back into it when I was probably like 16 or 17. Um, so I've been doing it for a while, um, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, I think Ryan and I, Ryan and I have very similar stories. Uh, our dad got us into the, into the hobby. Or my, our dad and our grandpa. Uh, we kind of picked it up as a young kids, and then just recently, I think both of them, both of us, have really got. Yeah, I really didn't get back into it until I was about 18 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, I was huge into it and uh, just sort of dropped off like you. Um, yeah. But you know, you always find your way back to the things you love doing. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like an affordable hobby too. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. If you have $25, you can go get a box of pennies, you can go through it, you can re-roll it and you can just take it right back. Exactly. You know, you're getting 24, you know, 95. You, know, you throw an extra five pennies in there and you can just keep doing it over and go over again. So it's a cheap, fun hobby. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You've been a bank teller for how long? Uh, almost four years. Almost four years. Almost four years. Yeah, it's been a while. And what's the biggest score you've had in that four years? Okay, so my biggest score in, in the bank, um, a guy walked in and he had a stack of half dollars and he just wanted some cash for him. And the stack was $7.50 in Ben Franklin half dollars. Wow. And $7.50 yeah. worth of Walking Liberty half dollars. And he was like, hey man, can I get $14? And I was like, absolutely you can. I would love to help you out with that. Uh, and then I turned around and, and bought them and uh, for 50 cents a piece. Right, yeah, and so, face value. Yeah, so that was like the biggest score in the bank. Um, but just like in a box, uh, last Thanksgiving, I got 96 wheat pennies in a box, but uh, earlier on, we we went through a box of uh, kind of like a collection dump. <laughs> yeah, and I got about 500. So I don't know if I'll ever beat that personal yeah, record. And, and if you guys haven't seen that video, make sure to check out the link in the description below. We went through a collection dump and found almost like nearly 500 uh, wheat pennies, a uh, bunch from the 40s, 50s, and even going back to the 10s. And uh, we also found another really nice surprise coin that you're gonna want to see. So mm. make sure to uh, check that out. So I'm sure that you, uh, as far as customer interaction, I'm sure that you interact with other coin rolls hunters at your bank as well. Um, what are the interactions generally like with other coin roll hunters? Yeah, you can tell who's been doing this for a long time and who has not been doing this for a long time. Right. Um, so the inexperienced coin roll hunter will usually come up and ask you, hi, do you have um, a box of half dollars? And that's usually not a question you get. Right. Uh, banks do not just carry half dollars. We don't have, uh, you know, just boxes upon boxes in the back. Those have to be like specially requested. Right. And so if you come up to me and you ask me for a box of half dollars, I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> um, I know what you're looking for. I know what you want. 
and I can tell, okay, maybe this person just saw a YouTube video for the first time. And maybe, maybe they just watched a Quinn's Coin maybe, video. Maybe they just watched a Quinn's Coin video. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we have those interactions, and I kind of, if they come to me, I understand, but if they go to like any of my other uh, coworkers, uh, they're super confused. Right. They're like, yeah. why are you asking for this? You know, like, I don't understand. Are you some kind of criminal? What are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, what are you yeah. doing? What could you possibly want with, how much, how many half dollars are you even a box, you yeah. know? <laughs> uh, like, what can you do with $500 and a half dollars, you know? And usually I'll, I'll try and like subtly explain to them like, hey, you'd have to order those. Um, and actually, we don't actually even order them for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, something that I think people should know is that the way banks get money is not free. So when we order our money, um, or any bank orders it through Loomis or Brinks or any other supplier, those boxes, so a box of pennies, twenty-five dollars. We've actually paid thirty dollars wow. for okay. that box. So is it a five dollar charge on any box? Or? So for us, it's it's five to six dollars. Now I'm not totally sure about Chase because Chase actually owns Loomis. And so maybe I don't think that they're actually struggling too much. No middleman there. Yeah, no middleman there. But uh, those boxes cost us money. Right. And so for us to just give it over to you, it's just like we're, we're throwing money down the drain. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's probably something people should be aware of is that uh, it's not free. That right. we do actually have to pay for this stuff. And the coins that we keep um, in our vault the one we, we have changed, they're mostly just for our business customers. And we and after you've established your bank for a little while, you know who your business customers are and you know what they need. And so, if you know, if we go through like a hundred dollars in pennies a week, we only order four boxes. Mm -hmm. And if you come in and you ask for a box, there's no way we can give it to you. Right. Yeah, so, I've had that happen plenty of times. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely have to have good connections with these banks and uh, you have to explain to them, you know, I need a box and have it, you know, do it in a week in advance. Um, and if they can't do it for you, that's fine. Don't just leave it alone, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm sure you've, you've probably had to deal with uh, some rude customers in the past. Absolutely. Yeah, there was one, there was, there was one individual who had come in once, coin roll hunter, um, and he wanted half dollars, uh, as a lot of people do, it's totally fine. Uh, I explained to him like, you know, we don't keep those on, on, on like on, on deck per se. Um, we have to specially order those. And he got fairly frustrated and he was like, okay, well I want 10 boxes. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't order like that much um, just to give it to you. Um, and so he, he, it was fairly like a, it was like a frustrating interaction for him and for me, uh, just because some people are just unknowledgeable about how yeah, banks yeah, work. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was definitely one interaction where I was like, man, this isn't good. So as as a coin roll hunter yourself, do you feel like you're competing with your customers? <laughs> uh, no, actually, the, there's like two or three of the customers that come in, and we talk about coins all the time. Yeah. So it's not more of like a competition. It's more like uh, when they come in, I'm like, hey, man, what'd you find? Yeah, uh, that's, right. anything yeah good. that's good. Yeah. But, uh, so a lot of times, because my bank actually has a, has a coin counter, mm. and so... We, uh, my bank's a little bit more stingy on giving out coins, uh, like boxes to individuals, but people have accounts with us so that way they could use our, our free coin counting. Right. Uh, and so usually it's not too much of a competition. Uh, they're getting their coins from elsewhere, I'm getting my coins from elsewhere. Right, because and then we usually, just kind of have some friendly banter. Yeah, and usually when you have a coin counting machine, that sort of makes you like a dump bank or, or an ideal dump bank at least mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. you know, people want to they want a bank to dump their coins with a coin counter um, yeah so they're probably yeah. not going to be using you as much for a pickup bank right yeah and so it's 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 sweet because with us it's like if you come in with fifty dollars in pennies uh i don't care right uh you know i don't have to sit there and count rolls out you can just kind of dump it in there about 25 minutes later, get a little slip and I just cash you out. Yeah. Um, so it's much more simple that way. If you can find a bank that has like a free counting uh, system or machine, um, usually they don't mind you coming and just dumping in coins. It's usually not that big of a deal because we don't have to sit there and count rolls and make sure everything's okay. And what is the longest amount of time that you've had someone <clears throat> actually using the coin counting machine for, for like an extended period of time. Yeah, so uh, they weren't coin roll hunters or per se, but we did have this um, nonprofit organization come in and they were there, I think for like five or six hours, wow. just straight, just dumping in and dumping in. I think it was like $3,500, $4,000 in coins. Jeez, wow. Yeah, I think it was like a uh, like a high school was donating oh, for like a, like a charitable cause or something. Yeah, like and that. I can see why, you know, you'd probably have to be okay with that. It's a charity, it's a good cause. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely, I got no problem. Right, yeah. Um, but what, what kind of is like the limit on if it's like a coin roll hunter coming in, what is the limit? When do you say that's too many coins? Um, actually us, uh, we don't. 
You don't. Uh, yeah. Um, now, what's nice about ours, maybe this is be like a good distinction. Um, our coin counting machine is in the lobby. Okay. So you bring it in, you dump it in, uh, and then it just goes before you. But I know that some banks, they do have coin counting machines, but it's in the back. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine people would probably get frustrated if you're just handing them boxes and mm -hmm. boxes and boxes. I see, okay. If you're in that realm, I'd probably limit it to maybe two boxes. Uh, you know, don't don't give them, you know, like $200 in pennies or, or like $600 in nickels. Um, and if you, and you're in like, uh, in your town or your city, if you have multiple banks with coin counters, I would kind of go to go to them, you know, kind of piggyback off right, of them, yeah. rather than going to the same one every single time. Because mm -hmm. eventually they're going to get frustrated with that and possibly make it even harder or mm -hmm. just kick you out entirely. Yeah, um, yeah, I've definitely heard about that. And so, yeah, just be mindful. Right. Um, when you come in, just be polite. And as long as you're polite, we don't really mind you being there. Um, because working at a bank, uh, a lot of people get frustrated because like this is like people's personal finances, and, you know. Uh, we deal daily with people who are, are angry or frustrated for different reasons. And so if someone comes in and they're polite, it's a really nice breath of fresh air. Absolutely. Do you think you have a higher tolerance to those types of people because you're one of them? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't mind them too much. Um, there are some people who come in and uh, I don't know. They can be like fairly like demanding or, or arrogant, and that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. But if they're like down to earth and and they're willing to like talk talk about like what they're like what they're doing, uh, it's really kind of fun when people try to hide it. Yeah, um, I'm gonna ask you if you've heard any really good stories about trying to hide their coin uh, their coin hunting. Right. Yeah. So we had this one guy come in for a while. Again, half dollars. Right. Um, a different guy though, and so he would bring in about a thousand per week. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, not terribly a big deal. Um, and I, I would go up and I'd ask him, like, hey, man, like, uh, where'd you get all these half dollars at, man? <laughs> and he was just like, you know, banks. <laughs> and I was like, what do you think? Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, what are you doing with them? And he was like, just like looking at them. <laughs> and I was like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> come on. And, I, and so then I was just like, hey, like, well, did you find any silver? And he was like, ah, uh, yeah, okay. I, I, and so then we, got, we were able to talk about it and whatnot, so. Yeah. What is uh, what is the preferred way to bring in coins? Uh, generally, what I would do is um, put them in the box. Of course, I don't have mm -hmm. to hand them over the counter like sure. you said some banks do. So, what is the preferred way? Is there a special bag, or what? what how do you do that? Yeah. So, if you're bringing it in for like a, like a coin counting, uh, if the coin counter's in the lobby, doesn't really matter. Right. Bring it in whatever you want. Um, some people have like uh, five gallon buckets, and you know sometimes they're full. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, you dump it in that way. You get like a, a Kroger bag or something like that. Um, but if it's behind the counter, you want something that's a little bit more sturdy. Um, so maybe like a uh, like a a coffee can. Uh, those are always good. Like a coffee can with like a handle on it. That way we can kind of grip it. Because mm -hmm. coins get heavy. If it's behind the counter, just make sure it's something sturdy that we can grab. Not like a flimsy shoe box that you've had since you were 12. <laughs> um, and if it, if it's rolled. Um, just bring it in a box. You, you know, it could really just yeah. be anything. Um, if you have like a $25 box, bring it in that way. That's totally fine. That actually helps us out. We're still gonna have to count it, but now you know we don't have to like break out like little metal trays to put it in. We just put it right in the box and shove it already, shove it right back there. Right. And speaking of those metal trays, do those actually help you determine whether you're trying to be cheated? Like if someone tries to come in with a half dollar roll and they like leave one out of every single mm -hmm. roll, you know, so they're giving you nine fifty instead mm -hmm. of ten bucks. Uh, how do you handle that and how do you mm -hmm. deal with it? So we don't like break out every roll and count it. We just have like, all right, good faith and trust that you are, uh, mm -hmm. that you're not going to cheat us because we don't count it. And then as soon as someone else comes in and they want it, we just hand it right over to them. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really not cheating us. You're just cheating someone else. Has right. a customer ever gotten mad over being shorted? I've actually never interacted with a customer who was, who was angry. No. Um, we actually, well, maybe my opinion is a little bit skewed because we as a bank just started um, accepting hand rolled. Hmm. For a long time we didn't because we had the coin counting machine. Right. And so we actually never really had to deal with it. But as some of the hand rolls have been coming in, uh, I, I personally have not had like a huge problem with it. One of my um, roommates is also a teller at a different bank. And he did have, uh, there were nickel rolls where it was like a tube of lead in the middle. So there were like five on each and there was like a tube of lead. Wow. Um, now that is, uh, it's a federal offense yeah. if you do it. So don't do it. Um, you will get caught because uh, if you walk into a bank, there are cameras everywhere. And not only do we see you, but we see your car and your license plate. And how did that 
how did that get caught in the first place? Who was the one that said, hey, this is lead, this is lead? <laughs> that um, Well, it was actually uh, uh, someone at his bank, They someone was like, hey, uh, you know, I want to cash this check, and it was like, you know, a certain amount. And so uh, they needed nickels in their drawer, and so they popped it open, and this tube of lead falls oh, out, and they're like, oh, come on. Sure enough, it was two. It was, it was like uh, almost two hundred dollars of, of rolls that they had. They popped them all open. Sure enough, all every single them. one. Oh, every That's single a lot of blood. I mean, lead's worth more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if they were if they were banking anything, if they were making any money. Yeah, uh, but just, usually, yeah. I mean, so that's the only case I've actually heard. You've been coin roll hunting for a long time. Yeah. What is your favorite coin denomination to hunt? Uh, pennies, hmm. for sure. Um, don't get me wrong, I love half dollars. You know, when you are going through and you're like, all right, I haven't, I haven't found silver in two or three boxes. Right. Then you open one and you find maybe like a 90% or you find a couple 40s, you're like, wow, man, that's really awesome. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. Um, but pennies, uh, it's what I started with, so I really enjoy it. I love the wheat penny design. And so it's like, okay, you know, you can go, you can buy a box, it's $25. Uh, you can go through it in, you know, probably like 40 minutes. So it doesn't take up, you know, like a huge chunk of time, maybe like dimes would. Mm -hmm. I have a real hard trouble seeing dimes, so I kind of stay away from those for the most yeah, part. Yeah, they are small, and mm -hmm. uh, most people just edge check those, you mm -hmm. know, they're just looking for silver. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah those are those are difficult coin to hunt. And uh, I've actually had experience um, where dimes just would not get counted in the coin machine. They mm -hmm. kept spitting them out, and I had to just put handfuls of dimes in over and over. Yeah, so that's another thing about the coin counters. Of if you keep putting, like, the same denomination in, um, you like dump like a whole bag of pennies or nickels or dimes or quarters. Um, there's like a sensor that it goes through. So how like a coin counter really works is you dump it in and there's a conveyor belt and the conveyor belt drops it into like a bin. And then there's like a spinning wheel. Think of it kind of like a, of a, like a coin Ferris wheel. Okay. And it keeps spinning around and then it'll catch a coin and it goes down a slide like this. Mm. Now as it's going down there's a sensor right here and it passes it and it'll measure the height. And so by the height, it'll say, okay, that's a penny, or okay, that's a dime. Really, by the height? Mm -hmm. so I thought it would be by the diameter, rather. It's actually by the height, because they're all wow. different heights. Interesting. Um, but it's extremely precise. Sure. Yeah, yeah so, it sure should be. Right? Yeah, <laughs> at least that's how our coin counter works. Okay. Um, we kind of have, we kind of have like your, your off-brand coin counter. We don't have like a coin star right, or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Like those, I have no clue how those work. I'm assuming that it's somewhat similar, but that's how ours work. It's kind of like a diameter thing. Okay. And so as it's going down, it passes through the little sensor and it's like, okay, that's a penny. And it keeps going down. And in like the bottom, we have nine bags. Mm -hmm. So the first one is your dime, your smallest. Mm -hmm. Then you have your pennies. You have three bags of pennies, one bag of nickels, two quarters, dollar coins, but we don't take eyes and hours, uh, and then half dollar. So it goes from smallest to largest. And so if it's dime, it has to go all the way down, and then there's like a little hook, it'll hit it and it'll drop into the bag. I see. Okay. And so with like pennies, once one bag fills, uh, it'll start filling up the next bag. Um, and so when you put multiple coins of the same denomination and they're going by so fast, It'll kind of be like, okay, was that one or was that two? And it'll just start kicking them out uh, to make okay. it go slower. What would be your advice to, to uh, help that? So usually, I mean, it happens sometimes. Um, I wouldn't really say that you have to like go out of your way. Mm -hmm. to like, okay, well, I got nickels. I had to get pennies so I can mix them. Not that big of a deal. Just kind of do what you're doing and just keep throwing them back in. Mm -hmm. They'll eventually count and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gives you an idea of just what types of coins you get the most. You get a lot of pennies, obviously, yes. and then quarters as well as mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are wondering, why aren't there any quarter uh, coin roll hunting videos on YouTube? And <laughs> I'm sure you and I both know the answer, but go ahead and let yeah. me know. Uh, okay, so for the past three years at the bank, we've had the clear rolls. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. They're like shrink wrapped, They're very tight, not like the paper ones that you usually see. Um, and I would unbox the quarters and I'd look at them every single time hmm. and I have never in f almost four years found a silver quarter at the wow. bank. Jeez. Not one single time. I've gone through tens of thousands of dollars in quarters and I've never found a single one. So it's even worse than I thought. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's awful. If you, if you want to get into corner hunting, please don't get quarters. Um, you will fizzle out, you will hate it. The reason is, is that once silver started to go up, 
uh, the quarters were extremely recognizable. Right. You know, the dimes you can kind of slip by, and it's like, okay, yeah, they're you know, small. It's, yeah, it's like it's a dollar of silver, you know, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but those quarters, sometimes you know, they're like three fifty. Sometimes get up to like you know five, five fifty, six dollars, and so they start getting yanked out. They're real recognizable. Mm -hmm. People just start mm -hmm. taking them out, uh, and there is literally none left. Right. There is like yeah. nothing left to have. And why would you say it is that there's still silver left in the half dollars? So the half dollars, they're kind of like an anomaly. I'm not totally sure. Um, I, I tend to think that a lot of the half dollars we see. Uh, are probably just people's collections that they've dumped. Right. Um, or maybe like a relative was a coin collector, uh, they pass away and people are like, oh, they don't really know what it is. Or maybe they're just like, you know, well, we need money to pay for A, B, or C, and they just go and cash them in, put them in a coin star, or put them like any type of coin counting machine. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, but there is plenty of silver in half dollars out there to be had. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're still lucky that the coin star machines and the coin counters aren't rejecting that, right? Right. Um, otherwise, people might actually realize what they have and say, mm -hmm. oh, maybe I should keep this. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually, we're really fortunate for that. Uh, so I know that coin star, uh, they'll kick out usually like the silver dimes. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if you, by chance, for some miracle, have a silver quarter, it will kick that out. But it will not kick out silver halves. Like not ours, even, ours will not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so like there's been times where, like the bag gets full, you have to go out there and you take it off, and then you put a new bag on. Uh, we'll see like, you know, like a 64 sit right on top and I'll just kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put another one back in or something yeah, like that. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, they're still out there to be had. Absolutely. What would you recommend for the best denomination to hunt to find silver? I would definitely say your biggest reward is definitely in half dollars. Makes sense. Um, but if you want to get half dollars, um, go to your local bank. Uh, try and don't try and get them right away. Uh, try and build like some type of friendship relationship with the people who work at the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, get on good terms with them. Ask them about their lives. You know what they like to do. Things like that. And then once you kind of like they're, they're comfortable with you, they're like, hey, uh, would it be like, would it be a problem if maybe I got like a box of half dollars next week or something? And they're probably gonna be like, you know what, yeah, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go in, and you're like, you know, I want to open an account solely because I want to buy coins from you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get really uh, angry looks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just go in there, build friendships. We're normal people, bank tellers are people too, uh, <laughs> and just come build build a friendship, and you can probably get half dollars. Uh, please stay away from quarters, like I said before. Yeah. But the dimes, there's still stuff to be had in dimes. Yeah. I found a few here and there, um, but my eyes are bad and I can't really see them too well. But if you can, uh, go for it. Yeah. yeah. And and what I've heard is usually it's about one dime per box is silver. Yeah. Um, so if you want to go through an entire $250 in dimes, your reward will probably be a single uh, silver dime, which is worth about a buck fifty. Uh, right. And so you could go like three boxes of half dollars and only find one, right. and it would still be you'd still be averaging the same right the thing about half dollars for me is is uh i th i see it as high risk high reward right? yeah so you can go 10 20 30 boxes without finding silver mm -hmm. and then the next one has 50 silver coins in it right and uh, that's just how it is you know you're, you're just after that really big score all the time yeah yeah i mean you're chasing the dream you're right. you're, you're mm -hmm. chasing uh like this giant score kind of like what we had earlier with these yeah. wheat pennies yeah where it's like you know we've been doing I, at least i've been looking at uh boxes of pennies for for years i've probably gone through a couple hundred and i've i've never even seen anything like that Absolutely, yeah. uh and so it's kind of like the same thing with halves where it's like but that one score uh could be astronomical mm -hmm. especially uh with the customer wrap rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, that's you know, that's how we got this giant score of wheat pennies. Um, it's out there right. and someone will find it. And that's the thing, the, the distinction between machine wrapped rolls and customer wrapped rolls, mm -hmm. right? Machine wrapped rolls are gonna be consistent. Right? Yes, so absolutely. You're gonna have these stats, you're gonna pile up this database and you're gonna have all of this information and basically you can count on that happening every single time in a machine uh, wrapped roll. Yes. But with customer app rolls, completely variable. You know, there's tons of different ways that you could score with customer app rolls. Absolutely. And uh, sometimes you get nothing, but sometimes you get huge scores like we had with the wheat pennies. So. Yeah, absolutely. When we get a full bag uh, from our, our coin counting machine of half dollars, it's a thousand dollars. We just grab it, we put it in the bag, and then we sell that um, to like our coin people, like a Loomis or a Brinks. You sell it off mm -hmm. to them, and then they get bags from everywhere. 
and those bags get dumped into a giant vat, and then they get rolled, rolled, mm. rolled. So it all gets mixed up. And so that's why it's so that's why it's so steady. Yeah. You know, you're not usually you don't find like giant scores, but you can count on it being consistent. Right. Uh, the customer wrap rolls usually you will not score with a customer wrap roll, but when you do, usually it's pretty good. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know some people uh, have found loose half dollars. Um, if you can get your hands on them, that's okay. Um, usually the loose half dollars are very similar to the bankroll because that's where the bankroll is even coming from. Um, but a, a huge p piece of advice I, I would give it to anybody is if you go into a bank, uh, don't just get uh, full rolls. If you're like, well, I have like four in my drawer, get those four. Those, those are where I find the most silver is just the random one or two or three that people have in their drawer. Right. And uh, yeah, that, that brings me to another point. Um, when I did a bank run a couple months ago, I called ahead and I would ask, how many half dollars do you have? Or like, what can you sell me? And sometimes they'd say, I have one half dollar. And I was just thinking, well, maybe that's a really good half dollar. Yeah. Could be a, could be a good one. So you, you, wanna, you always want to get out there and get it all. Um, yeah, especially with those, those half dollars and the um, teller trays, mm -hmm. loose stuff. Yeah. Very yeah. good chance for getting good stuff. Yeah, just this past month, uh, I went and looked at one of my coworkers. They had like a little coin tray. I saw they had a half, and I looked at it, and boom, it was a 64. <laughs> uh, and then last month, I uh, one of my other coworkers uh, was taking a deposit from a local fast food restaurant, and she had a, she was like, hey, I got a couple half dollars if you want to look at them. Two Ben Franklins, boom. There she goes. And so get the loose half dollars. <laughs> Do it, please. You will you will eventually hit it. So it's something I, I think about when I think about uh, working at a bank is the, the classic robbery scenario. Yeah, yeah sure. So uh, do you have any experiences with uh, possible robberies? Or Yes, I have been in one robbery. Really? And um, it was pretty... Uh, it was like it was a life-changing experience. Yeah. Uh, and so we, uh, there was four of us there, and we saw the guy walking through the parking lot. Usually, if a bank robbery happens, um, you usually don't see him coming. They just walk in. Uh, usually, you know, if they have a gun, they maybe you know pull that out, things like that. But usually, most robberies, they just kind of push a note towards you, and it says, "Hey, give me your money. This is a robbery." <laughs> and you're like, "Okay, sure. Here you go. Uh, uh, you know, it's not my money. I don't care. Take it, man. Yeah. Uh, just don't ask for my wallet, please. You know, I, I need that twenty dollars." Yeah. Um, so and so we saw him coming through, and he'd actually pulled a gun out in the parking lot and, and proceeded to walk in, and he hopped over our counter, uh -huh. um, and it was it was pretty. Uh, I mean, it was just like it, it happened so slow. Um, it was actually, there was enough time for me and one of my coworkers to actually make it into the vault room and we locked ourselves in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but our other two coworkers kind of froze and he ended up robbing both of them and kind of oh. jumping over. Uh, it was terrifying. Uh, it was like real scary. Do you know what happened to the, to the guy? Or? Uh, they never caught him. Never well. For, I mean, maybe he did something else and they caught him and you know, he's maybe in jail for doing something else. But right. uh, yeah, we don't know. Um, now, okay, that was that's like a pretty like scary bank story. Yeah. Now, yeah. there's also really funny ones. Everyone's probably seen the movie where like the guy robs the bank and like uh, like blue ink goes everywhere. Yeah. So like those are like dye packs. Yeah, those um, exist. Uh, they good. do exist. Um, that's all I'm gonna say is they do exist. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, so a, fu a funnier bank robbery story is this happened out in uh, Colorado, I believe. The guy went up, robbed one teller, and the teller gave him. Uh, the die pack, and then the second teller also getting the die pack. Now, how how these die packs work is there's a sensor in them, and once you go outside the perimeter of the bank, 10 seconds. After about seven seconds, tear gas starts coming out. Tear the, gas? Yes, tear gas starts coming out. And then the box, he has to heat up to 2,000 degrees for the ink to liquidize. Mm -hmm. And then it's more of like a pop. It's not like an explosion. It's more like mm -hmm. a pop, uh, but it's extremely hot. Mm -hmm. So the guy grabbed both the sacks of money and put it down his pants and ran Ooh. out and uh, uh you can use your imagination of what yeah, happened yeah. uh they, they did catch that guy they caught him at the hospital oh, yeah. so yeah, there's a good story to end on so from a bank teller's perspective what are some of the best things that a coin roll hunter can do to make your life easier yeah uh one just be polite um be willing to wait if you need coins uh because most of the time we're not going to have it right then and there for you. Right, right. Um, so basically just come in and don't have any expectations. Um, usually uh, we'll be able to get coins for you if we don't have them then, but it might actually be a week. Um, so just be prepared for that. Also, if I give you coins, 
do not give them back to me. Mm -hmm. right. If you come in in like two hours with a box of hand rolled coins, uh, I will probably never give you coins again. Have you ever had anyone uh, just like right in the lobby, just look through them real quick? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where uh, you have like like half half dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. there there was a there's been a couple people who will come in like, hey, you have a roll? I'm like, yeah, I got two. Huh. And they'll pop them out, look at them, and be like, no thanks. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's, come that's on, weird. man. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Right. Uh, so don't ever give the coins back to the bank that you got them from, unless they have a coin counter. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's not a big deal. Um, but those are probably like the biggest things. Just be polite, have, don't have ex expectations, be ready to wait if, if, if you do have to, and then do not bring them back. Uh, I, I, I would suggest having a single dump bank. If you don't have a bank that has a coin counter, just pick one bank and make their lives miserable and take all of your coins. <laughs> just, just keep going there. Uh, but don't come to my bank. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about coin roll hunting a little bit more. Let's just take you away from that bank teller sure, uh, persona yeah. that you play and just, just look at you as a coin roll hunter. Um, what is the best find that you've ever had? Uh, that's actually that's a pretty easy question. The best find I ever had was a 1955 double die uh, weedy. Wow. Um, yeah, I found it when I was 17. And I was going through uh, like just like a box of pennies and I saw the wheat and so I put it off to the side. And later on I was looking through the dates and I looked at it and I realized something was real off with this one. And I looked up, uh, I was, I figured I was like, okay, there was like a double die error in this year. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I was like, this thing just looks fake. Yeah, just, it doesn't right, look real. Right. And so I actually I put it in like a little coin flip and I just kind of put it off the side. I didn't really think much about it. You know, I saw like the big prices, but I was like, nah, there's no way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I put it away for like six to eight months. And I, I never really touched it. And then came a time where I was starting college and I just didn't have money to pay for college. And so I thought back, I was like, you know, I have that coin. Maybe it's real. I should at least go check it out. So I took it to my local coin shop and they were looking at it and they did verify that it was real. It was in fairly good condition. It wasn't, you know, uncirculated. It wasn't, you know, MS 63 or 64 or anything like that. Uh, but all the details were there. It looked good. Um, and I needed $1,600 to kind of start my first semester of college. And they offered me a thousand, and I was like pleading, and I was like, "Come on, please, just give me the sixteen hundred dollars." Like, you know, I really, I just want to go to college. That's all I want. <laughs> uh, and they offered me twelve, and like I'm frustrated, and like you know, like they're trying to like give me the best deal that they can. Uh, and there's actually a customer who had walked up. He was kind of listening uh, from like kind of like afar, and he asked to look at it. And so I looked at it and he was like, hey, you know, like I, I actually need this for my collection. Uh, this As is like, most people do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and he was like, you know, this is like one of like four or five that I need. Um, how much, how much did you want? And I was like, my school, my schooling is $1,600. And he asked the guy, he's like, how much do you think this thing's actually worth? And uh, the coins there was like, it's probably worth somewhere between $1,550 and $1,600. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the guy turns around and says, I'll give you $1,800 for Jeez. it. And I was like, I, I, I thought he was joking, and I got real upset with him. Really? I was, I was oh, like, I was man. like, dude, why? Like, I don't. Why would you say that? Like, this isn't a joke. I'm just, I'm just a kid trying to go to school. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he was like, Well, I figured that you need sixteen hundred for school, and then you probably need a couple hundred dollars for books as well. Oh, wow. And yeah. uh, the guy really helped me out. Yeah. And so uh, we drove to the bank, and he withdrew the cash, and I, I gave him the coin, uh, and he told me good luck. Wow. And so the best coin I've ever found, I had to sell, but it was for good. It was it was for college. So yeah. no, that's, a, uh, that's an that's incredible story. Yeah, it was it was really an experience. It was really cool. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of questions about me. I'm gonna ask you guys a couple questions. Sure. Now. Okay. Um, what is maybe not your most expensive coin you've ever found, but your favorite coin that you guys have ever found? Uh, you know, that's a tough one for me. Um, but I think it would have to be a 1976 capped die penny that I found in a box. Um, I'm not a huge era guy. I don't usually seek them out, even though they can be worth the big bucks. Sure. Um, but this air stood out to me like none other. Mm. It was just like, I was going through the roll and I find this penny and it's just blank. And I'm like, mm. did someone just like grind this off or what? Mm. But then I, I looked at it and it, it had sort of like a line going down it. Mm. And uh, it turns out that this is a, is, it's a cap die uh, era coin and it's worth about 30 bucks. Um, I haven't found anything near as expensive as the 1955 <laughs> double die. Sure. I have actually never even seen one in person. That is a very nice coin. 
Um, but this was definitely my favorite coin. We actually have it here, and we're oh, going to go ahead and show you, uh, you guys here at home that uh, this is something that I found, and it was actually in a video, so uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that now. So here's the coin. I got it in a flip here. Uh, it says right there, it was found on March 24th, 2016, so a little over a year ago. And uh, as you can see, the back looks perfectly fine, but the front is completely wiped. You can sort of make out Lincoln's head, but not much else. Uh, definitely one of my favorite coins and uh, an awesome find in a coin roll. So aside from what we've found, what is your favorite coin in general? My favorite coin that I have in general is actually a 1864 uh, Indian head penny mm. uh, that I have currently. Um, someone got it for me as a gift uh, about three years ago. And uh, in 1964, there were, there were two different types, basically, kind of like in Eisenhower's, you have two different types. Mm -hmm. um, and this type was called the CN, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, and it's just, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And I was like, man, this is 1864. What a, what yeah, a sweet yeah. coin. So in my personal collection, that is my favorite. It's not the most expensive. Uh, it's, it's about $40, um, mm -hmm. but it is definitely the one closest to my heart. I really like that one. Do you know if it's the, the L variety, the L and the... Ribbon. You know what I'm talking about? The... Yeah, I'm not totally sure. Yeah, no. no. Uh, I don't find Indian heads that often. I've right. only found three coin roll hunting. So when it comes into like the intricate details, yeah. well, yeah. So that's three coin roll hunting in how many boxes? Hundreds. Hundreds. Man, Hundreds. So that just shows you how difficult it is to find an Indian head. Oh, when you find one, it's, it's special. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, real briefly here, let's go ahead and talk about YouTube. Uh, yeah. The whole climate, the coin community. Um, what, what kind of videos are you watching these days on YouTube? So, I watch... Uh, I, hey, I've been watching Quince Coins since it was 3.0. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when someone on camera is pulling out five V-nickels in a roll, yeah. uh, it really grabs your attention. Another thing I wanted to ask you, and be honest here. Yeah. How convinced were you that that V-nickel video was legitimate? Um, at first, 0%. I was like, yeah. no That's way, fair. That's fair. no way. But uh, I continued watching your videos, and uh, there was no like you know giant score after giant score after giant score. And I was like, you know, it seems like this guy had a sweet score and he's gotten way more into it, which is usually what happens. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, you know what, this guy's not pulling crazy things out every time. Uh, it probably it probably did happen, which I'm sure you would attest to that, that was a oh, real yeah, deal. Yeah. Um, and so it's been even more believer after today when we found, you know, 500 wheat pans. You know what? <laughs> probably can happen. Oh yeah, yeah. anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And it's it's all about just sticking with it. It's a numbers game. You have to be persistent in this hobby. Mm -hmm. and that's, the, yeah. that's what I want a lot of my viewers to understand is that you don't just go out and get it and, uh, you know, score big every time. We may show that, but yeah. uh, you really have to be working. You know, there's a lot of stuff off camera that you don't see. Yeah, how many times have you gone through a box of uh, pennies or nickels that doesn't even get made into a video. Oh, all the time, yeah. I go through boxes and sometimes, you know, I start filming it and then halfway through I say, this, this isn't worth filming, no one's gonna watch this, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, it, it gets thrown out. And mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of other YouTubers can say the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, we want to give you guys entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to show you these boring hunts, mm -hmm. but we do want you to know that they happen. So yeah. um, that's uh, that's sort of the key takeaway. Yeah, that's probably the same with me, where there's probably, I probably go through 20 to 25 boxes of pennies per month, and maybe two of them were real solid. Where the other ones are like, you know, I'm pulling out five, six, seven wheat pennies. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's one that's like, you know, 18, and you're like, wow, what a, what a sweet box. Right. And there's one that's like 500, and you're like, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, well, that's awesome. That's about it. <laughs> what about you, Kevin? Who are you watching these days? Uh, recently, I've been watching a fairly new YouTuber called uh, Half Dollar Make Your Hala. And this guy, he, this guy, he's with his partner, uh, Snacks. And these guys are absolutely, uh, they're, they're, they're really fun people. Yeah. They do a lot of live streams. and. They're just really enjoyable content. Even even if the finds aren't that great, they know how to keep the conversation going and mm. just keep it just keep it moving. So I I think they make good content. And I enjoy watching them. I really enjoy Stack Attack. You know, just simple. Uh, he gets four boxes of halves and he just goes through them. He shows you. Uh, enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, I like watching Numis Nick. He does a lot of pennies. I love pennies. Absolutely. Uh, his videos are fairly tasteful. He doesn't, you know, take you through the whole grind of going through the whole box, but kind of gives you the highlights going through. So shout out to those guys if you guys yeah, ever watched them. Those were the original three. Um, some of the first guys actually making coin roll hunting videos on YouTube. JD. Uh, like, yeah, a few years ago it wasn't a thing. 
Uh, of course, JD, uh, JD's Variety Channel. He was probably one oh of the yeah. First. Shout out to JD. I, yeah. I can't believe I forgot him. He was first. he was yeah. probably the first guy to ever put up a cornwall hunting video on YouTube. Um, yeah. He didn't, you know, he was generally focused on detecting, but uh, yeah. he did a few cornwall hunting videos and kind of set the path for the rest of us that have you know strictly cornwall hunting channels mm -hmm. uh, to make it big and uh, do well. Yeah, absolutely. And so the video that we just made together, where we found like this collection dump. Uh, I where we were going through roll. I just dropped it, uh, and so we're we're going through the roll, and and uh, luckily it was right underneath the video camera. Uh, I remember I, I flipped over a bunch. I didn't see it at first, but then I saw something, and it was real thin, and it was like I thought I was like, okay, this is just like an early weedy or early weedy because it was just so smooth. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, and I thought that I had read one cent. Uh, it was real washed. Uh, and then when we got it closer, we flipped it, and it ended up being a barber dime. And it was actually said mm -hmm. one dime. Yeah. So we do. I put it in a flip. It's kind of hard to see. And so here is, there's the barber, right there. Let's see if you guys can see. Just it an incredible find, guys. Yeah. And there's the back. Oh, dropping man, I'm just it dropping it all over the place. I don't even care about it. And there's the <laughs> one dime, right there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, the best find probably I've ever had. Uh, the earliest find I've actually never found anything barber. Before. Would you say that's better than the fifty-five double dive? Uh, definitely not. Yeah, <laughs> by no means. I, I had to mention that you said the best find. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah, uh, best as in earliest. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah or oldest. Sure. And my oldest find is a 1900 Indian head penny, which I actually have right oh, here. Oh, yeah. If you want to show that. Uh, it actually came in just six boxes, which is probably another reason <laughs> someone might think uh, right early on that yeah. my videos are illegitimate. But mm -hmm. uh, this was just, you know, it, it happened and uh, I haven't had any such luck mm -hmm. since. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that, that was a really good find. It actually came in the same box as that 76 cap die, so uh, just a great box mm -hmm. right there. I had to go to my tellers and thank them for that one. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are trustworthy guys. You know, I, I believe the video you guys put out are real, uh, and as we've gone through, uh, we've done a competition, we went through my box, I, I have no doubt that what you guys are putting out is actually real content. Uh, and so when you put out your, your April Fool's Day stuff, I totally fell for it. I was right. like, wow, this dude scored and it's <laughs> awesome and I'm so pumped for him. And I'm, I'm just like anticipating you flipping all these nickels, there's V-nickels, there's buffaloes, there's all these things. Uh, and then just have it all come crashing. I was like, man, that was so good. Yeah. And I tried to edit that video in a way that was a little bit different from what I normally do, sort of kind of jumping between um, uh, cuts in the camera, you know, just cut, 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 to try to signal to you that like this is, there's something off about this video, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's sort of just a commentary on, on what I see because I have seen things on YouTube that I don't believe and mm -hmm. I really don't believe it. Um, you know, there are things out there, I'm not going to say anybody's name, but sure. um, there's definitely stuff out there that I think uh, could possibly be fake. So what I was trying to get at with that video in particular is just that, you know, don't trust everything you see, um, especially, you know, on YouTube. We're just a bunch of guys making videos and uh, a lot of people, you know, they want to get views. So, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes they'll go as far as uh, making something fake like that. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just an April, Pool, uh, April Fool's prank. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, was a, it was a good video. It made me laugh at the end. Yeah. It was yeah. good. It was good. You know, we were able to do a little bit of acting as well. So yeah. that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So lastly, I would like to ask you guys, do you guys have any advice on someone? Because I want to purchase a metal detector. Okay, do you guys yeah. have any advice of like maybe your experiences or like what do you guys use? Or do you have like any advice for me who's trying to actually purchase yeah, one here in the future? Your guy, yeah, 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 so I use uh, the ACE 400. It's mm -hmm. a nice uh, middle level detector, which I think you could probably handle at this mm -hmm. point. Um, I think it's good to start on a detector like that and then maybe move up to something higher end, uh, which I haven't even gotten to the point of doing yet. Right. Um, it's a good economy detector. It's, it costs about $350 mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to do pretty much everything you want it to do. Uh, it can go underwater um, up to the coil, at least up to the coil box. Mm -hmm. So that's about three feet. Okay. Um, and uh, it's it's just sturdy, you know. Kevin and I were out metal detecting yesterday, and we got caught in a huge rain, and uh, we had to run back to the car with a detector, you know, going through the woods, knocking into stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, pulled it out the next day, and it still works fine. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's just a great machine, and uh, that's definitely something I would recommend. We're not sponsored, by the way, by uh, Ace Four Hundred. Um, <laughs> if you want to, though, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I started on a Mind Lab, and uh, that okay. was okay. I haven't really had any connections with the brand since. 
Um, that's another good option though, I believe. And Kevin has a Whites machine if you want to mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah, so my uh, Whites machine, I actually bought it way up in the UP in uh, Copper Harbor. Um, I, my, dad, my dad bought it for me for uh, just going through the, the copper mine tailings just looking for chunks of copper. Mm -hmm. And it was a great machine for that. And it's it's a great machine for the woods too. I mean, uh, I found five coins out of that logging camp and that, that place is a hundred plus years old. So, I mean, those coins are, they're sinking a little bit. Um, but as metal metal detecting in general, the biggest thing I can say is do your research. Don't, don't just go to the beaches or the parks. I mean, every, those have been hit so much. Um, Go to the county county uh, office or whatever. Look up some maps or look go look, look online or anything. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many places that haven't been hit, and you can find some great stuff with uh, not so expensive machines. And another thing I want to say, um, if you do get a metal detector, please consider getting a pinpointer. It's not going to be very fun unless mm -hmm. you have a pinpointer, yeah, for sure. um, because you're going to just be bending over and over again, uh, you know, waving your dirt sure. over the coil, seeing if you have it, <laughs> breaking it in half, you know, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Pinpointing is is a huge part of detecting, so that's going to sure. be another cost that you need to factor in. Yeah. So one last question I have for you, Dustin, is: sure. Are you thinking about starting your own point collecting YouTube channel? <laughs> awesome. Man. Oh man. Um, um, it sounds sweet, um, but I'm still currently in school, right. and so it takes some time. I'm sure you know the exact rigors mm -hmm. of going to school and keeping Quinn's coins. Well, of course, going. I don't have a, a job on the side. Yeah, and so I also work, um, and so I would like to. I might. I might try. I might give it a shot. At this point, I'm still kind of on the fence about it. Um, because I have no editing skills whatsoever. Uh, I appreciate all the YouTubers out there who take time to, you know, film and then edit uh, and then put it out there. And so I might, I'm not totally sure. Um, if I do, uh, are you gonna give me a shout out? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, wonderful. How about yeah. three shout outs in a row? Three shout outs <laughs> in a row, all right, deal. I'll see what I can do. Okay, well, uh, it looks like that's all the time we have, folks. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Dustin, thanks for coming yeah, on the show. Yeah, absolutely, thanks really for having appreciate me. It. Kevin. Pleasure. And, Thank you. and uh, make sure to check out those other videos that we did with Dustin. Uh, there's two more on the channel right now. So uh, I'll put a link in the, the description below and you can check those out. And guys, as always, make sure to leave a like on the video if you uh, like the video. Um, make sure to subscribe because I post new content every single week. And as always, I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coins signing out. And I'll see you all in the next video.